Well, hey everybody, Roger here, and welcome to my channel, Roger's Reads. And this is my Saturday book chat, where I talk about books that I've read uh, during the week, and uh, books that I've started, and uh, general bookish topics. So uh, this week I ended up reading three books, which isn't too bad of a we uh, reading week. The first book I read was entitled The Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, and I read this book in ebook format. So the story starts out when 15-year-old uh, Will's brother Sean has just been murdered. Now Will is heartbroken and paralyzed by his brother's death. And then Will recalls three rules that he's been taught. Uh, the first one was don't cry, don't snitch, and if someone you love gets killed, find the person who killed them and kill them. So uh, I don't think we ever find out who created these rules. There's something that just passed down from one person to another. Now, I really liked what Will had to say about the rules. He said something like, the rules weren't meant to be broken. They were meant for the broken to follow. So keeping those real rules in mind, especially the third one, Will knows what he must do. He thinks he knows exactly who it was who killed his brother. So uh, overtaken by anger and pain, he finds his brother's gun that, that was tucked in his dresser drawer, sho shoves it in the back of his waistband, and heads out to avenge his brother's murder. Now, it's worth noting that most of the men in Will's life have been killed by gun violence, uh, such as his brother, his father, and his uncle, I believe. So what's interesting about this novel is that the entire story takes place in an elevator over the span of one minute and seven seconds, and is entirely written in staccato verse. Now, you know, I believe this is the first novel in verse that I've uh, that I've read. Now, I, I hate to admit this, but I am not a fan of poetry. I think you know I was a French major and an English major, and the agonizing hours I spent analyzing poems I think maybe turned it off for me. So so I never read poetry, but this. This worked amazingly well for me, and I really, really enjoyed the format. So Will, he who lives on the eighth floor, gets on the elevator with the intention of killing his brother's murderer. So on the way down, the elevator stops at every floor, and a man in Will's life, or I just should say a deceased man in Will's life, gets on the elevator. But each person who gets on the elevator has been killed by that same cycle of gun violence as, uh, as Will is about to enter into himself. So from each passenger, we learn their backstory, uh, hear about their shattered lives, and experience their broken hearts, and see them as they try to convince Will, each on their own way, that the rules don't mean crap if you're dead. So Will hears over and over how one impulsive emotional decision has the power to utterly destroy a person's life. You know, this book is kind of reminiscent of A Christmas Carol, except that Will is visited by ghosts of murdered family members and friends. So what follows then is an amazing, raw, powerful, and de haunting depiction of, uh, of urban gun violence. So from each Will of Ghosts narrative, Will begins to question what he thinks he knows and realizes that what he knows may not be true at all. Each person's story causes Will not only to confront his fears and his doubts, but also to question his beliefs. In fact, this is the kind of novel that like, it causes all to question our beliefs and perhaps look at life a little bit differently uh, and pushing our boundaries in the process. So at the end, Will is giving the choice to follow the same direction as his brother or to take another path. Now, this book really ended up blowing my mind. Uh, it's a fast read. I think I read it in less than an hour. You know, there's so much packed into the verse of this book. I think that this is the kind of thought-provoking book that can change lives, young and old alike. You know, in my opinion, this book was phenomenal and a masterpiece. And this was definitely a five-star read for me. I really, really loved it.
So the second book I read this week was entitled The Wicker King, uh, written by Kayla Ancrum. So The Wicker King follows two boys, August and Jack, who have been friends since they were little and and are kind of like brothers. They also both come from a neglectful, uh, dysfunctional family. In fact, August has to sell drugs for money because his uh, sole caretaker, his mother, has pretty much given up on life and is, is kind of folded inside of herself. So August needs the money needs the money he earns from drugs to take care of her. And uh, Jack's parents, who travel extensively, extensively for work, leave him alone for weeks at a time to fend for himself. As the novel progresses, we learn that Jack begins experiencing these hallucinations from an alternate alternate reality that is kind of blending in with everyday life. Now, August knows that Jack needs some sort of help, but feeling that he owes a life debt to Jack, decides instead to stick by Jack's side, keeping, uh, keeping uh, the hallucinations a secret, and, uh, and accepting Jack's visions as reality. Jack himself is confident that once he fulfills a, a sort of quest that he's on, the hallucinations that he's experiencing will disappear for good. So August plays along with him, uh, even putting his own life in danger as Jack draws him more and more into his fantasy world. Now, as a reader, we can't help but wonder whether Jack is actually, in fact, experiencing and seeing an alternate reality of some kind as his insistence that what he's seeing is real becomes increasingly convincing. So as I read along, I began to wonder whether this book was going to turn into a young adult fantasy novel. Now, I like the fact that I knew nothing going into this book, uh, so it was a fun journey for me as I wasn't quite sure where the novel was going to take me. So I'm really glad that I got the physical copy of the book. And it's cool how the pages are initially white as we start out. But as Jack defends further and further into his fantasy or madness, splotches of black or gray begin to appear. More and more on the page. And it starts overtaking the page until finally the pages end up completely black with white print, which I thought was a brilliant device and an excellent uh, metaphor for the direction in which this novel was heading. So I, I really liked that about this book. Additionally, there are numerous drawings, doodles, uh, photocopies of arrest records, uh, copies of detention slips, um, school suspension forms, medical records, and still frame photographs, which really add to the story as well. And actually, these devices aid in telling the story. Additionally, there aren't any chapters. Instead, we get maybe a page or page and a half snippets uh, for, from which we uh, piece together the story. So, as the novel progresses, things get a hell of a lot worse for our hero uh, before they get better. And this book does deal with a lot of intense, hard-hitting subjects such as uh, child neglect, uh, toxic codependent relationships, uh, and mental illness. But though this was an eerie and haunting read that was at times disturbing, it is also poignant and beautiful, and is very much also about friendship and unconditional love. I'm so happy that I came across this book and, uh, and ended up giving this one five stars as well. So the last book I read was entitled Endohuman, Love vs. Duty by Nick Dream. And I've also read this book in uh, ebook format. So this was a really interesting story. And it follows 18-year-old Adam Vanoff, one of the last endohumans on Earth. So what I could gather, endohumans are like a superhuman hybrid with extra powers and highly developed senses. So Adam is trained and raised by his grandfather to develop his endohuman abilities and live out a sacred duty to protect mankind from a potential threat, which we really don't know what it is until much later on in the book. So the one ancient rule that Nick's grandfather constantly warns him about is how falling in love 
could be dangerous for their mission. So, of course, there is a girl, and her name is Evie. So we have Adam and Evie. Clever. So, uh, so Adam wants nothing more than to kiss Evie, despite his grandfather's warnings that one kiss can, out, can undo everything they've worked for and bring a certain evil, though we're not really sure what it is, into the world. So hence the title of the book, Love Versus Duty. Now, I'm not going to tell you uh, which one Adam chooses because, hello, spoilers. But that aside, the book was really quite a roller coaster ride and really grabbed my attention from the get go as we tried to figure out the nature of Adam's mission uh, and what this mysterious evil that might manifest is and what on earth does a kiss have to do with all of this. So then the author throws in a major plot twist. Which, uh, which made me back up and go, whoa, I did not see that coming. And this is when things get really interesting as we discover that nothing is as it seems, which is one of my personal favorite tropes. And then we begin to wonder whether there really is even such a thing as endo-humans or whether this is all the product of a deranged imagination or unstable mind of our hero. A theme that we've already talked about once today when we talked about the Wicker Man. Oh, the Wicker King. So then the author plops down yet another plot twist and another and we head off in completely new directions. The novel veers off into some wild tangents as the story incorporates vampires, uh, werewolves, uh, old gods, fallen angels, uh, aliens, robots, even Nazis. So this book was kind of a sci-fi, mythology, action, paranormal romance with a bit of Percy Jackson thrown in. So toward the end of the book, the pace picked up even more perhaps even a little bit too much in my opinion, as I found it kind of difficult at times to keep track of everything that was going on because there was so much happening. It was at this point that I felt that the author was perhaps throwing too much information at us at once, where it was almost overwhelming. At one point, I remember thinking that the uh, mishmash of genres in this story made it especially confusing in places. But in, spite, but in spite of that, it was one hell of an exciting read and was very unique and original. But if you're looking for a story with a resolution, you won't find it here. The story ends on a cliffhanger, which didn't sit really well with me, because if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know my opinion on cliffhangers. Uh, so if you want to find out what happens, you will need to buy the next book in the series. And I do believe that this book is going to be a trilogy, um, but only the first one's been written so far. So if cliffhangers don't bother you, and you're looking for a fast, action-packed read that's really out of the ordinary, you know, endo-human just might fit the bill. So uh, I ended up giving this book three stars. So this week I also started on Philip Pullman's book, The Book of Dust, which is the first book in the new series. And I actually think The Book of Dust is the name of the series, and the name of this volume was La Belle Sauvage, um, which was named after the canoe in the book. So uh, I'm about probably about three quarters way done, and so far I am loving this book. And I'll share it uh, probably during, uh, during next Saturday's chat. I'm also winding down on uh, Thunderhead, which is a sequel to the Scythe book by Neil Schusterman. I think I have about four hours left. I'm listening to an audible, so I should be able to finish that by next week uh, also. And, uh, and also a third book. I always have three books going, one audio, one physical, and one ebook. The third book I started was also The Catcher in the Rye, which I'm reading for the Re-Readathon uh, Challenge, which is uh, put on by Michael over at Catalyst Reads. And, uh, and I'm really enjoying this book. It's a lot of fun. I really like uh, Holden Caulfield's uh, character. Um, so that is my reading for this week. How about you? Have you read anything interesting? Uh, any new books coming up in the next week that you plan on reading? Let me know. And, uh, and that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.